the act of self-immolation itself, forbidden in the Buddhist faith, demonstrates the desperation of Tibetan people at the continued illegal occupation of Tibet by China. Despite that enormous sacrifice, the international community has not spoken out strongly and has passed no sanctions against China. And I particularly identify here our own High Representative for External Relations, Kathy Ashton, who in my view has come far below the expectations, not only of the European Parliament, but of the international community in this terrible situation. We call on the EU to do the following to urge the Chinese government to refrain from using excessive and disproportionate force against unarmed and peaceful protesters, to open up Tibet to UN and international observers and media, to send a fact-finding delegation to Tibet, to urge the Chinese government to immediately resume dialogue for a way forward on the basis of the middle way policy initiated by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. How many people need to set themselves on fire before uh, the seminars turn from making words to taking actions? How many people? It is my belief that we are past the point of lobbying with words alone. We should lobby with actions. Moral support is no longer enough. Once more, I call for the fact-finding delegation as well as the delegation of the members of the European Parliament to go to Tibet, to Tibet, not to India where it is safe, or to a Tibetan community down the next street. The tragic cases of self-immolations are the product of Tibet's bloody encounter with the communist China in the 1950s and the failure of China's subsequent Tibet policy. It is this failure that has led to the emergence of this new form of protests in predominantly young, educated Tibetans. Their deliberate, methodical and measured approach shows us a steely spirit of resistance and an incredible determination to expose their dire and wretched situation to the outside world in setting their precious lives, precious physical bodies on fire. Self-immolations inside Tibet since 2009 have not been well documented online. Chinese repressive policies internet on internet and internet censorship are well known. Last year, um, Tibetans writing on blogs in Tibetan language, they were referring to self-immolations through poetry and prose. And when we read the poems and we read the blog posts and we read the comments that Tibetans write, the overwhelming sentiment we see is one of respect to the self-immolators. And very often when we have debates or discussions about the situation in Tibet, it's the voices of Tibetans on the ground that are missing from these debates and discussions. So what these blogs bring to the debate are voices of Tibetans who are either self-immolating or have directly been affected by self-immolations. We see really an amazing number of new local small-scale organizations for education and support for Tibetan language burgeoning in Tibetan areas in the last two years. In February 2012, which is last month, Du Wei Chun, who is the deputy head of the Communist Party's United Front Work Department of ch in charge of Tibetan affairs, called for the end of nationality labeling. If there's no mention of what nationality, minority nationality you belong to, uh, then it means the Chinese state will have no problem destroying all these minority schools, minority <coughs> nationality schools that they have set up and that have nurtured this pool of Tibetan intellectuals and poets and writers who sustain now Tibetan identity through language. The European Union uh, should appoint uh, the spatial coordinator for Tibetan affairs, not only possibly resolving peacefully the Tibetan issue and not only raising uh, on um, uh, more um, uh, adequate uh, um, way with the Chinese counterpart of the issue of, of Tibet, but I would say it would be also very, very important moral support to Tibetan people who are fighting uh, for their freedoms. We should demand again a special envoy for Tibet according to the model of the United Minister for Foreign Affairs. For many years we called the Council and the European Commission to install this coordinator who is responsible for the ongoing dialogue between the European Union and China and also bring forward the dialogue between the Chinese government and the Dalai Lama. It's not enough to establish a person being responsible only for human rights in the European Commission, in my opinion. A special coordinator for Tibetan affairs is of utmost 
importance. Within the European member states, the EU member states, we, re we actually have a situation that they uh, are much more afraid from the economic, uh, of the economic power of China than this has been the case for years and years. It is our obligation also as members of the European Union, as members of the European Parliament, to protect human rights. I am here to say you, Tibetan people, that I, I, I am here to give you uh, all my support. I am here to denounce Chinese authorities who still continue undermining religious, cultural, and linguistic rights of the Tibetan people. And I am here to, to keep the pressure with other MEPs that we have to push the European Commission to have a more active role in defending European values, in defending Tibetan rights. We therefore strongly encourage China at all occasions to create conditions which will allow the Tibetan people fully to exercise their political, religious and cultural rights in line with the Chinese constitution and the Chinese legal provisions on local autonomy. Regarding the appointment of a special coordinator, we have still the position that this would not add value to the work already undertaken by the ES. We hope that the dialogue between the envoys of the Dalai Lama and the Chinese government, which regrettably has been frozen, will resume soon, since we strongly believe that only this dialogue can lead to positive results aiming at resolving outstanding issues in a peaceful and sustainable way. This is a shame of not just China, but European member states and political leaders and the United States, because we are afraid of the Chinese money and the Chinese economical power. And this is a shame of Europe, and we cannot even quote on, on Christian roots and heritage if, if we are closing our eyes and mouth and, and we are doing nothing. <laughs>